Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today we're going to be looking at this Flexvolt 16-inch chainsaw by DeWalt. So this does require the Flexvolt battery, which we'll cover a little bit later. I do have a full video that I'll put in the video description that uh, talks about the Flexvolt battery versus the 20-volt one. This is a 60-volt tool, so it has to have the 60-volt uh, battery. The other 20-volt batteries will not fit in it. And so in this video, we're just going to be going over some of the basics and, uh, of course, uh, if you do not have the operator manual, please get one. DeWalt is very good about if you just do a Google search. I can put that in the video description too. Uh, it's very easy to come up with the instructions. They have very nice PDF versions of this. And I'm not covering everything that's in here. And it's up to my interpretation. So with that said, uh, just take this video as demonstration purpose only. And uh, it's your responsibility to follow it uh, and get your own manual. Uh, rather than uh, what I say. So make sure you also have good safety equipment, uh, safety glasses, goggles would be even better. And for sure, uh, gloves. The chain is very sharp. Okay, so of course, this is a good time to remove any rings, jewelry, loose fitting clothing, anything that could get stuck in the machine as well. And so what we're going to do first is engage the brake by pushing this forward. It's a safety mechanism uh, for kickback, and we'll explain that later. But uh, that way we make sure that uh, the brake is on, the battery is not installed. And so what we're going to start off first with is called the sheath. And so it's referred to as the guide bar scabbard. Okay, so again, um, you'll see later in the video I'll have gloves on as we're handling this. It's a very good idea to be wearing gloves. But this is basically the sheath that it comes with, the scabbard as it's called. And uh, that's very useful to have so that you're not tearing everything up. Uh, so this is a 16-inch uh, chainsaw and so as you can see this is what the teeth look like uh, up close and so uh, there is a diagram on the actual guide bar itself here and so that can help you understand to make sure that you're putting the chain on correctly and that it is going in the right direction. This tool comes pre-installed with the chain but we're going to also be checking the tension on it and make sure that it's all right and you want to make sure that it was installed correctly too. Uh, one thing we will cover as well is the handles. They are insulated, and the reason for that is because as you're cutting, if you were to hit anything electrical, you want some form of uh, insulated grip to help protect you from that shock. And so it's important as you're holding this to hold it properly, not uh, what's most comfortable. Uh, again, we have our kickback brake here, so when it's pulled back towards you, it's uh, operating, and as it goes forward, it... Uh, would uh, disengage. So this would be as it would operate with the guard uh, facing as close to you and as you flip it forward that uh, engages the brake and turns it off. Uh, as for the trigger, you have a safety switch here with your thumb and then a variable speed trigger. So as you push down on that, the speed will be variable. You can go fast or slow. With these chainsaws, as it says in the manual, you want to be at full speed as you be begin cutting. Uh, so make sure uh, you go through the manual again. Uh, now we'll talk a little bit about the Flexvolt batteries. And so as you can see here, this battery is a 20 volt capable on the right hand side but it is a 60 volt battery as well and so this can be used in some of the regular uh, 20 volt tools but the tool itself as it says on the side is a 60 volt tool therefore the only battery that will fit in here is the flex volt battery so again check the video description as i did go over the differences but here's a regular 20 volt battery and as you can see it has different cutout marks on it that will make it so that it will not fit inside this tool so if you go to put it in it physically will not fit because they don't want to underpower this tool with a 20 volt battery they want to make sure that you have uh, all the power you need. So we'll set this one aside and go back to our flex volt battery. And uh, a lot of these uh, have the cover on the top for transporting. So you want to uh, just remove that by pushing down on the, uh, the lock to remove it. And now we're going to go ahead and install our 60 volt flex volt battery. So if you don't have one of these, because this was a tool only, uh, it didn't come with the tool. They're pretty expensive. They're over a hundred dollars. Um, but uh, just be aware that you will need that uh, flex volt battery for this to work. And so now with our flex volt battery installed and the scabbard removed, you'll see that we have our, our safety here. We have to pull back. And again, you should have your gloves on at this point probably. 
and no ring. And so now you can see that we have a variable speed uh, trigger here as we depress the safety with a, our thumb and then use the trigger. Again, pushing that uh, forward will uh, kill the power on it. And uh, that's for a lot of the kickback. So kickback is referring to if, as the chain snags and gets caught, you're gonna have this forward motion that I'll kind of demonstrate here. As you're cutting, for example, you might you know, have it get caught up and it pushes forward. So that kickback uh, that you experience, uh, they really wanna make sure that you stop and don't uh, have anything dangerous happen. So it has that hand guard that's uh, designed to trigger that forward to shut the power off. So on the other side of the tool, you'll find the oil indicator and where you can add the oil. So this uh, will show you a minimum amount. So make sure that the oil level is always over that line. And so to access this area, you will simply just pull down on the top of this tab and unscrew it. So it just flips down and then you turn it counterclockwise to unscrew it. And that will expose the area which uh, you can then add some of the oil. Okay, then just reinstall the cap uh, by turning it clockwise and then flipping the tab back up into its locking position. Now the bar and chain oil is very important because if you think about it, it's lubricating the machine, which is good, but if you're cutting into trees that maybe have fruit on them that you're going to eat or trees that you definitely don't want to poison that you're just trimming and not just cutting down in the forest, then you want to make sure that uh, you're using an oil that's not going to harm you or poison anything. So uh, they have different kinds and I would uh, research and find exactly the one that you want. Uh, this was some of the bar and chain oil that I had. And the manual also recommends at worst that you could use 30 weight motor oil, but motor oil that doesn't have detergents. And that's gonna be pretty hard to find. So I don't think that's a really a, a good option. So I wouldn't do that unless you're in some kind of a emergency. But just remember the kind of oil that you're gonna use will be in essence getting into the tree that you're cutting. So keep that in mind. This bar and chain oil here uh, also has an anti-sling additive in it so that as it's being slung around, it will st uh, stay more on the chain itself and the guide bar. Uh, there are also vegetable-based oils that you can buy for pruning trees, again, uh, to make sure that uh, the health of the tree is being taken into consideration. Now we'll remove the chain, show you that process, but make sure you have your gloves on. And of course, make sure that the battery has been removed. You definitely don't want to be working on this with a battery. And so if you have the uh, cover to put back on it, do that. And I like to just pull the trigger as well to make sure that there's no power in it. Uh, and also it's a good idea at this point to push that kickback brake on just to make sure that we're working on the tool in the right settings here. And so we're gonna go ahead and put our gloves on and remove the uh, scabbard cover here. Get that off and out of the way. And so now on the side of the machine, we have a little turning lock here for this cover that we're gonna take off. So that tab flips down, and then we use that tab to loosen it and take this cover off. So with that cover out of the way, now we have our guide bar here, and we can kind of see the internals here, how this works. There's the diagram for the chain to make sure it's on right. Uh, we can also see over here that we have um, the little posts that we need to line up, and our sprocket here is the drive motor itself that's turning it. So this is our tensioner wheel here. That's actually what's gonna add the tension to the chain. So as you can see, as you pull down on this, it should slap back into place. And so the manual suggests pulling it down only one eighth of an inch, which is about three millimeters. So just barely pull it down and see if it snaps back into place. If you tug on it, it will probably go more than that eighth of an inch, but that's how far you should pull. Um, but too tight will burn up the engine and the motor and then too loose, obviously the chain could come loose and you could have some other catastrophic failures. So we wanna make sure that the chain is always inside the guide bar and that uh, the tension is proper on this. Uh, so uh, make sure you take good care into that. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen this up to just show you as you loosen this wheel, uh, it will basically take that post and move the guide bar uh, back in the other direction so that the chain is now loose. This is how you would now replace the chain itself. You could take the guide bar off too uh, and take the whole chain off. And so as we're lining this back up, pay attention to this little post here 
uh, that's what has to be in place uh, as you're lining it back up. So you should have the post that we screw our actual uh, attachment onto and then that guide post make sure that that's in place now we're gonna go around the whole chain and make sure that it's riding inside the guide bar um, and make sure that it's uh, fairly taut and so we're getting back to you know that 1 8 inch or 3 millimeters of uh, movement so we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up and once you can ensure that the chain is in fact riding correctly on the the drive wheel and in the actual uh, guide bar we can put our cover back on so we just tighten that counterclockwise and put the tab back up and again we're going to check our tension here and we can still adjust it to get it back to that one eighth inch or three millimeters of movement with a nice uh, spring back uh, tension uh, the manual has a lot of good instructions on different ways to cut, and so in a later video, I'll probably find some wood to chop up and give you guys uh, some ideas about that. So check the video description for that, and also check the video description for my playlist on all the other tool reviews that I've done that are like this. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.